Hello everyone. We're going to go through some of our plates that I have off to the side here. Different type of auger and see what grew on them. These are for demos. First thing we're going to start off with, hectonin enteric auger. And we have two plates. Now this is our control up here. This is E. coli, Citrobacter freyundi, and Proteus vulgaris. And let's take a look at them. Notice how our control, it's still a green area. For our E. coli, it's a yellowish, orangish color. It's commonly known as salmon. This side, same thing, some yellowish orange. And on this side, no yellowish orange. What is interesting is that there is the ability to uh, get sulfur. So a bacteria that is able to use sulfur as part of its metabolism, reduce sulfur, uh, that will turn black. And you notice that on a Proteus, the colonies themselves are black. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you. Right there, black colonies. Now, when we take a look at hectonin normally, first off, it's supposed to be a selective media, meaning uh, non-enterics or non-gram positives. Um, excuse me, non-gram negatives, are going to be selected for, and gram-positive bacteria are going to be selective against. Then, if it's a gram-negative or an enteric, it's going to appear as this sort of yellowish-orangish color, which you can see more of uh, when you flip over it as well. Now, typically, this also differentiates Shingella and Salmonella from other enterics and from each other. So if it's a Shingella or Salmonella, it will appear blue. We don't have Shingella or Salmonella. So it would be a, a blue auger rather than this orangish color. And for Salmonella, it would be black colonies on blue auger. Why we have black colonies on green auger is because Proteus vulgaris, in this case, does not... Uh, it does have the ability to take the, uh, the, the iron and reduce that to sulfur, hydrogen sulfide. But we do not see here inhibition either. Now that's very interesting about Proteus. This brings up the idea that not all of our bacteria, our, our differential and selective media is gonna be 100% perfect. But this also means that we could get a false positive if you didn't know what we were looking for. In this case, this is a bacteria that can use sulfur, but is not an enteric bacteria. Or at the very least is a weak enteric. In the case of Proteus. Next thing we're going to look at is eosine methylene blue. Proteus vulgaris, Citrobacter freyundi, Escherichia coli, control. And here's where we get some interesting things. Now, we take a look at this one. You do get some growth with pinkish purple colonies. Same thing over here. On this side, you do get same thing, pinkish purple colonies with no growth over here. Now with both of these, uh, hectonin and EMB, gram negatives typically are the only things that are going to grow. Now here's an older EMB with a interesting kind of spooky face on it. This is E. coli. And if you take a look, it's sort of a metallic green. That is typically how uh, very vigorous fermentating uh, strains of E. coli look on EMB, sort of this metallic green sheen. Next thing we're going to look at are McConkies. Same as before, E. coli, control, proteus, citrobacter. Now, our E. coli, very good growth, pinkish purple colonies. That's exactly what you want to see for E. coli. Remember, the sugar inside of uh, McConkie's auger is lactose. Now, on this side, you can see there's a lot of growth here. That area here is all citrobacter. 
the uh, uh, way that this was inoculated, it looks like there was some kind of water or other fluid that allowed the Citrobacter to come over, or the Citrobacter just really was a uh, vigorous growing bacteria at this case. What we're actually looking for for the Proteus is this little square here, where you can, it's hard to tell, I'm trying to zoom in, there is some growth, but not a ton of growth on McConkie's. Next, Casein. Now this is two different bacteria. This is Cochuria rhizophilia and Bacillus subtilis. Now this one, this is a negative. There's not any clearing area around the bacteria. This is a positive. You can tell that there's some clearing halo around the bacterial colony itself. Now this was put in the incubator for around 18 hours instead of 24. So it could be that it's just not really came up to uh, temperature and up to our um, uh, growth cycles yet. But that is a positive and that is a negative. Next thing we're going to take a look at, starch. With our starch plates, E. coli, control, control, E. coli, proteus, citrobacter. And what we're going to do this time, we are going to add in iodine. And after adding an iodine, we're going to look for halos of clearing, just like we did for the casein, to see if starch has been hydrolyzed. Now, after adding the starch, we can see that both of our plates here are negative. We don't have any halos of clearing around the bacteria. We just have the bacteria itself. 